So, we can all agree that this past offseason, the Miami Heat were pretty underwhelming. Some may even say the worst offseason in the NBA. Those people, I tend to disagree with, but on the outside looking in, it was pretty bad. After making it all the way to the NBA Finals and showing that you just don't have enough, the Miami Heat went in this offseason with the easiest layup trade people may have ever seen, with Damian Lillard right on the board saying that he specifically wants to go to Miami. Well, it didn't happen, and a lot of people saw that as Miami's last chance. And starting out the season 1-4, and four, it really didn't help a lot of people's picture of this team. But people forgot to add the context of the simple fact that out of the first five games of the season, the Miami Heat had three games in four nights that included the Boston Celtics, Milwaukee Bucks, and Minnesota Timberwolves. Three of the top five teams in the NBA right now, and two of those games we played with either without either Bam Adebayo or Jimmy Butler. The fact that we were even in those games and only lost them by single digits is absolutely insane just in itself. And so far this season, after those first five games, the Miami Heat have turned it up and have gone 5-0 since then and have looked like one of the best defenses in the NBA. And they're doing it behind Bam Adebayo, who's not only taking a leap offensively, but somehow has gotten better defensively too. So let's talk about just how Bam Adebayo is not only becoming a superstar, but is basically locking up Defensive Player of the Year award. And if anybody else gets it this year other than him, we just know that this league does not like him. So, the Miami Heat, like I said, didn't start off too well this season, starting out 1-4, but they've been on a 5-game winning streak so far. They didn't have a 5-game winning streak all of last year, and that is because a lot of people saw Max Schultz and saw Gabe Vincent play really well in the playoffs and didn't realize how absolutely garbage they were in the regular season for the Miami Heat and reason why they suck that bad. The Miami Heat are fundamentally just a way better and well-built team now, and that is behind Bam Adebayo that's taking a leap into absolute superstardom, averaging 23.2 points. 10.4 rebounds, 3.8 assists, 1.2 steals, and 1.4 blocks on 53% shooting, Bam Adebayo is putting on the absolute masterclass showing of offense playing this season. And in the last, in the five game winning streak so far this season, it's absolutely been insane the numbers he's been able to put up. Right now in this five game winning streak, he's averaging 24 points per game, 12.4 rebounds, five assists, 1.6 steals, 1.4 blocks on 54% shooting, and he's hit a three in a rhythm and has had a career high in free throw numbers. And we have two free throw merchants with Jimmy and Bam. This is absolutely amazing. But he's come to this season and he showed he's ready to play. Offensively, he's gotten so much better from the guy that looked tentative to even shoot sometimes, being completely aggressive and decisive and wanting to score and getting the ball in positions to create his own shot to score from a guy that really just didn't have much top in the offensive end other than being a lob threat and a connective passer to being the hub and creating majority of the offense for this team to having a knockdown mid Asian jumper shooting it near 50% while taking 68% of his shots from those sh from the either short or long range mid range area to completely just being overall just the best driver foul drawer and scorer on this roster even with Tyler being down the man has put on absolute amazing showings this entire season whether it's the 22 19 and 10 with two steals and two blocks that he had against the Lakers or the 13 11 and three blocks he had against the uh, Memphis Grizzlies or hell the 26 and 17 he get had against the Atlanta Hawks without Jimmy Butler and Tyler Hero in the lineup the man has just been amazing and he's been living up to those baby KG nicknames that the Miami Heat have been giving him and he's playing it to that level and currently with the current numbers that Bam is showing I'm pretty sure that there's only a handful of players that actually averaged them and I'm pretty sure half of them won MVP that year too he's not gonna obviously win it or probably if he's even gonna fade conversations gonna be out of the top five because it's <laughs> These guys are just freaking ridiculous. You have Jokic being a walking 30, 10, and 10. There's nobody that's beating that on crazy efficiency. So it is what it is. But just know that Bam is putting on an absolute show. And with how well Tyler's playing too, this Miami Heat team has a very good chance of putting on an incredible show in the Eastern Conference. Now Tyler's down with an ankle injury and he's probably not going to be back until, I don't know, maybe like a little bit into December. But so far, what he's shown has been a massive positive for this team so far offensively. And with how slow Jimmy started this year, it's great to know that he won't need to have to ramp it up for this team to get some wins because that's what had to happen last year. But that's not just where he's gotten better. A perennial defensive player of the year candidate and what many people consider as the best defender in the NBA somehow found a way to get better on that end. Bam Adebayo this past season, players are only averaging 0.5 points per possession against him in isolation. That equates to about 15% 
That's right, he's holding guys to 15% in isolation. Not to mention he's holding guys to 10% lower than their regular um, season averages um, in field goal percentage. And he's also deterring about 5% less shots at the rim, which is not in the upper echelons with the Rudy Gobert or Joel Embiid are averaging about 10% less. But he's also cutting down team's three-point fre um, frequency also. So he's the only big in the NBA that's cutting down not only team's three-point frequency, but their shots at the rim at the same time. So being one of, if not the best isolation defenders in the NBA, being one of the best, if not the best switch defenders in the NBA, being one of the better drop defenders in the NBA, um, being one of the better rim protectors in the NBA, he's basically covering every single loophole for the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat are right now a top de seven defense in the NBA, and to survive and win a couple more of these games before Tyler Hero comes back, they're gonna need to be that good defensively, simply because they don't have ways to really generate a bunch of offense, so they're gonna need to strap in defensively. But with Bam Adebayo here, you can definitely count on that being the case and them at least being sound night in and night out on the defensive end. Not to mention they have a lot of great defenders on this team. Between Haywood Highsmith, Jaime Hawkins Jr., Drew Smith, those are a lot of those are guys that are gonna um, ring a lot of names throughout the regular season. You're gonna wonder why these guys are somehow like going crazy in the playoffs or just locking down your favorite player. And then they're gonna realize that these guys have been doing great. Actually, Jaime Hawkins Jr. is ranked one in isolation defense this past season. Players are isolating him at a pretty nice frequency and he's only averaging 0.36 points per possession this season. That should tell you just how good this team, that a rookie that's coming off the bench is one of the best defenders in the NBA already. But Bam Adebayo has truly taken that leap into superstardom right now and I think he's effectively the, a top five big man in the game. Um, you can decide if you want him over Anthony Davis. I know a lot of people are gonna say no, but because of simple health and just how much better Bam is getting and he's like five years younger than AD. It's looking pretty nice in Bam's direction. And I obviously Jokic, Giannis, and Embiid are the better ones and Bam and AD are fighting for that fourth and fifth spot. But being in the realm of these big men and knowing that Anthony Davis may not play enough games to make an all NBA roster this season, Bam Adebayo has a very good chance of being that all NBA third team center. And obviously he turned down his contract extension this past season so that he can make an all NBA team and get super max money. And he looks like he's doing just that. You don't have to question if he's an all-star this year. You don't have to question if he's gonna be all defense. The only things that are in question is if he's gonna be all NBA and if he's going to win the defensive player of the year award. In my opinion, right now he should have both. But we're only 10 games so far in the season. There's still a lot of basketball to be played. But if he does keep this up, boy, is this league in trouble. But that being said, that's been FLB. This is my time. It's been a while, guys. I know. Nearly about two months. But I'm out. The wait won't be that long anymore.